Hey everyone, welcome to the Wyoming State Museum. My name is Jeremy Thornbrew. I'm the curator of education out here, and I am very happy to be talking to you today. Now, you are watching this video for one of two reasons. First, you're going to be getting the Oregon Trail education trunk in your classroom. Awesome. Or, number two, you're going to be going through our Travel the Oregon Trail field trip. Also, awesome. Maybe you're going to be doing both. Well, uh, I am here today to talk about the five big questions of the Oregon Trail. To level set about the biggest five questions of the Oregon Trail before you jump into your activities. So we're going to talk about what the Oregon Trail was. We're going to talk about where the Oregon Trail went, when it went, who went along the Oregon Trail, and why people would risk such a dangerous, dangerous journey out west. So let's start with what, what the Oregon Trail was. Now, this may seem a little silly to be talking about what the Oregon Trail was. A lot of you probably played the video game. Most people in the United States have a pretty at least general understanding of what the Oregon Trail was. But let's make sure everyone has the same knowledge. So the Oregon Trail was a path, a route, almost like a map or a trail that led from the eastern part of the U.S. out west. These paths, these, uh, these, these trails, were initially known by the Native American people who had been living in our continent for over 10,000 years. Eventually, the mountain men, the early fur trappers like Jim Baker, Jim Bridger, Kit Carson, and the other mountain men learned these paths for themselves oftentimes by learning them from the Native American people. Eventually, these, these routes and paths were passed on to the missionaries like Marci uh, Narcissa and Marcus Whitman. In turn, they taught these paths to the immigrants who would cross the continent by the hundreds of thousands. So what the Oregon Trail was was just the paths that would get you from the east out west that was passed from people to people to people over the generations. Now, when we think about where the Oregon Trail went, that's also kind of an interesting topic because the Oregon Trail did not only go to Oregon. It went to three different places, three different states as we call them now, um, Oregon, California, and Utah. But each of these different places actually had a different name for the trail. The Oregon Trail obviously went to Oregon. The California Trail went to California, and the Mormon Trail went to Utah. Now, no matter where you were going out west, and you can see the different destinations on the map here, everyone met in one place, and that was Independence, Missouri. Independence, Missouri was the gateway out west. It's where everyone met and, met and bought supplies, their wagons, their food, their clothes, their coats, got their animals, joined up with the wagon train, like we're gonna all be a wagon train together. And so everyone met in Independence, but you can see all those little lines going to Independence. People came from all these different cities all over the United States, met in Independence, and then went out west. Now also, you know, even though we have three different names for the trails, Oregon Trail, California Trail, Mormon Trail, you can see most of the journey west, it was pretty much the same trail. They saw the same forts, there were similar dangers, the same geological formations. So when you guys come to your field trip, we are going to Oregon. We're going on the Oregon Trail. But a lot of the same stuff we're gonna talk about would be true for the California Trail and the Mormon Trail as well. So people went to these different places. When did they go to these different places? And that's what this graph shows. So on the bottom, you can see the colors for each of the three different destinations, and you can see um, how many people went each year, according to historical records, to each of these places. Now, the Oregon Trail started about 1840. So for all of my, you know, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, and other Rocky Mountain schools, you probably learned about the mountain men. The Oregon Trail started just after the mountain men. A lot of the mountain men actually stopped being mountain men and became, uh, you know, guides for the Oregon Trail going west. So the Oregon Trail was about the early 1840s to the uh, early 1860s. So it's only about 20 years that people were going on the Oregon Trail. So a little longer than a high school senior has been alive. So it's a very short little piece of history, although it's so important for the history of our country. So, you know, we've talked about um, what it is, where they went, and when they went. Let's talk about why. 
So as you saw in the map, even though Oregon Trail was more popular, more people actually went to California than any of the other destinations. And the reason California was so popular was because of gold. The gold rush. People discovered gold out there and people flocked by the thousands to go try to strike it rich in California with the gold rush. Now, for people going to Oregon, one of the top reasons they were going to Oregon was because the U.S. government was giving away free land. You could go become a farmer out in Oregon, and it was completely free. All you had to do was get out there. For the Mormon people, a lot of them went to Utah to find religious freedom. And that's one of the top reasons why Mormon people went to Utah. But there were other reasons too. Some young men went to find adventure and to just start a new life out west and just see what adventure they could find. Now, some people went to escape the Civil War. Now, the Civil War didn't start until the early 1860s, after the Oregon Trail time period, but the conflict was brewing. There was racist laws in place, and, and there was pressure, and there was, there was fighting. So some people just wanted to leave the, the, you know, the United States and get out west before the Civil War started. Other people went to escape debt. Some people just you know went to become missionaries. Some went to become merchants and sell stuff, open up shops, and sell things to all the other immigrants going through. And some people just went to help secure, you know, Oregon territory. At this point in history, both Britain and the U.S. both said Oregon belonged to them. So a lot of people thought the more Americans we pump into Oregon, the more likely we'll be able to claim it for ourselves. So before we end the video, we really need to talk about who went on the Oregon Trail. Now, I'm going to have an honest conversation with you guys, a big grown-up conversation. Most people who went on the Oregon Trail looked like this family. Number one, they were middle class, not rich, not poor. Rich people mainly took a boat around the continent to get in. Um, it took a lot longer, but it was safer and they could bring all their stuff. Poor people could not afford to take the Oregon Trail as a general rule. I mean, you had to buy a wagon, animals, guns, four to five months of food, clothing, coats, tools, all these things. Poor people just couldn't afford it. And even middle class people, middle class being not rich, not poor, in the middle, um, they had to sell almost everything they owned to be able to afford this trip west. Here in a, you know, an activity coming up, your teacher is going to have you pack your own wagon with a group of other students. And you're going to see how much stuff you had to pack to be able to go west on the Oregon Trail. Poor people couldn't afford it. Additionally, most people who went on the Oregon Trail were white. And that is because we had a lot of racist laws in our country at that time. Now I mentioned that up in Oregon they were giving away free land and you only had to get there. The only thing is that they were only giving that land to white men. If you were a single woman, no land for you. If you were married to a man and he died on the Oregon Trail, no land for you. If you were any race of people besides white, no land for you. And so, I mean, once Oregon became a state, they had a law in place until the 1900s that black people couldn't even live there. Not only that, this is before the Civil War. You know, um, a lot of people in the eyes of the U.S. government, a lot of black people in our country under the eyes of the U.S. government were still considered property. They belonged to other human beings. And so they didn't have the ability to just go out west and start a new life. But not only that, all that land they were giving away to white men up in Oregon, they were taking that away from Native American people whose families and ancestors had been there for, for tens of thousands of years. So the Oregon Trail was a dangerous but great opportunity for middle class white men and middle class white families to start a new life in Oregon. But it did not help poor people it did not help any single unmarried women. It did not help any people of color. And it actively hurt Native American people living in the Northwest. When you guys come to uh, the field trip, we're not going to talk too much about this. We're going to roll some dice, play some game, and see how play some game to see how many of you guys survive the trip west. But it is important as we're learning about history to see how one point in history fits into the grander story of more civil rights for more people. And so the Oregon Trail is just one example of that. 
well kiddos your um, teachers are going to have some activities for you guys to do you'll see one more video for me uh, before you pack your wagons and then you'll be coming for your field trip for us to play a game and see how many of you survive the trip out to Oregon have a great day and I'll talk with you all again soon bye everyone